This video will explain the lottery ticket hypothesis. This paper has revolutionized the theoretical understanding of neural networks, and for doing so, it was awarded the 2019 Paper of the Year at the ICLR conference. This is the lottery ticket hypothesis in an intuitive way. In a neural network from a random initialization, there exists a subnetwork within the network that can reach the same accuracy as the entire network. So this changes our understanding of stochastic gradient descent. It says that SGD seeks out to find a subset of well-initialized weights in the entire network. So the winning tickets, meaning the subnetworks that achieve the same accuracy as the entire network, they've won the initialization lottery. And this study is going to show how extremely correlated and important the relationship between initialization is and these subnetworks found by pruning the weights on neural networks. So this is the idea of pruning neural networks generally. In this picture, you have a neural network. You have the neurons in one layer, each connected to the neuron in the next layer. This is what like a fully connected, uh, a series of fully connected layers would look like. So after pruning, you would do something like this. You would only keep the weights, uh, like certain weights, and weights are these edges, not the neurons themselves. Those are uh, like summation and then activation functions. The weights are these uh, connections highlighted in red. And pruning means let's keep these red weights. This is all that we need. We don't need any of these other black weights. And that's the idea. These red weights would be this sub-network, the lottery ticket network. We contain only these red connections. So neural network pruning is a common practice. It's been used pretty frequently to decrease the storage size of networks, the energy consumption, and inference time. But the problem is, historically, when they prune the networks, they can't train these networks from scratch. So what you would do is you would train the full network, and then you would prune it, and that's that. There's no more, you could maybe fine tune it, but you can't train these networks from scratch. You can't prune it and then take this new network and then maybe do uh, search around the new network, like search for new augmentation policies, learning rate. You can't really experiment with this because you can't retrain the prune network from scratch. So this is the key insight, and this is how they overcome this problem, is initialization is super important for training prune networks from scratch. So what they do is they find the subnetwork from pruning, and then they maintain the same initialization. So even though they've trained the network all the way to convergence at the end, and it has some weight, let's say 2.31 is the weight of this particular uh, you know, instant, instance, and then you would reinitialize it. So let's say even though it's 2.31 at convergence, if it started out at 0 0.77, for example, you would put it back to 0 0.77 to retrain the prune network. And these lottery ticket networks tend to be 10 to 20% of the original size of the network. So this is the key idea. If you randomly reinitialize the weights after you prune it, they'll no longer match the test performance and they're no longer uh, going to find all the benefits of the prune lottery ticket networks that can be trained from scratch. So how is this implemented? You've got your neural network F mapping X to the class labels parameterized by theta. F reaches some minimum validation loss at some iteration and the, you know loss and accuracy are quite the same. So the prune network is a mask over these weights theta and the mask is you know much smaller I mean uh, yeah much so with the mask weight there are much less weights than there originally were. And the mask can be represented in this format that the mask is either 0 or 1 a binary. 1 meaning include the weight in the pr forward propagation and 0 meaning completely ignore it. And then it's the dimensionality of theta, meaning the number of parameters in the network. So what the lottery ticket does is the prune network reaches the validation loss at iteration J prime with test accuracy A prime. So how do we find the winning tickets? How do you prune the neural networks? So this is a pretty interesting idea. There are two ways of doing this. You can either do one-shot pruning or a, an iterative pruning. So what this says is that after the pruning is finished with either one shot or iterative pruning, which is what we're going to talk about the details of that next, the weights are reset to their initial weights. So how do we prune the networks? One shot pruning says you train the network and then go through it and prune it. Iterative pruning says each round prune P to the one over N percent, N being how many times you're going to commit to iterating through the pruning, and then uh, iteratively prune the parameters and then train, reprune, repeat this 10 times. In either case, there is this layer-wise pruning heuristic where you remove the smallest magnitude weights and the connections to the output, meaning the features right before the output, you prune this at half the rate. You are less aggressive about pruning these weights. So this example 
let's say we throw this idea out the door of having some kind of met metric of how you prune it, and you just randomly sample masks to prune the network. This shows that this doesn't, this plot here, this series of plots show that this doesn't work, and that in this case, the sparse of the network, meaning the more you prune it out, the slower the learning rate and the slower the eventual test accuracy. So these are the architectures studied in the lottery ticket hypothesis paper. The lacoon net uh, variants of VGG, the conv 2, 4, and 6, they're just much smaller versions of VGG, and then two big networks, ResNet 18 and VGG 19. And with these big networks, they find that they have to do uh, like a learning rate warm-up heuristic trick in order to find the winning tickets. And it's not as straightforward in the bigger networks as it is in the smaller networks to find these sub-networks, the lottery ticket networks. So these are the results, and the plot may be a little tough to interpret, but uh, so what it is, is they find that once it hits 51% of the weight, it already reaches higher test accuracy, 21% it reaches even faster, and then eventually this saturates at 3.6%. And this is with respect to the uh, size, how much is masked out. So generally what I took away is that it's mostly a speed storage improvement rather than performance. They don't seem to get a massive improvement. They definitely get a better improvement in the convolutional networks and the fully connected networks. But then again, there are a lot of implications for speed and storage improvements that would benefit performance. So these plots just show the uh, results uh, across the different things that have been discussed, like uh, the iterative pruning variable, you know, iterative pruning or one-shot pruning, and then also compared to the big finding, the reinitialization randomly or the original initialization. And then again, this is, they show the results on the convolutional networks and the fully connected networks. And the convolutional networks seem like they have a little more of a profound improvement from this algorithm. So the implications of the lottery ticket hypothesis. For one, it improves the training performance. If you can train it faster, that's always good. Additionally, it helps you do this hyperparameter search around miscellaneous things outside of the network if you can train it faster. This helps us design better networks, and also we have a better understanding of what might be happening with this neural network training. Thanks for watching this video on the lottery ticket hypothesis. This famous paper is linked in the description. If you like this video, you'll probably also be interested in another video from Henry AI Labs, Deep Compression. This will talk about more things around pruning and with more detail on quantization and Huffman coding. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs.